A spin-off game for a series to me succeeds if it does a couple things. First, it makes a good, respectful effort at creating a fun game for fans of the genre being spun off into, and second, it incorporates the elements of the original series in fun new ways. Persona 5 Tactica accomplishes both of these goals, making a fun tactics game with plenty of homages and ideas coming straight from the regular Persona games. This solid gameplay plus a story and characters that were more than satisfactory and great music and performance made my time with the game worthwhile. Persona 5 Tactica is a strategy RPG developed by Atlas and published by Sega, spinning off from the mainline Persona 5. Tactica is now the third direct spin-off and fourth overall from Persona 5, I'm not counting P5X. And yeah, frankly, that's quite a few spin-offs. I can understand why people are getting a little tired of it at this point. This is only the second I've played, though. Persona 5 Tactica released for PC, Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series on November 17th, 2023. It is also available on the Xbox Game Pass streaming service. The early conversation before release centered around the Day 1 DLC, including a separate scenario that takes place before the main game, with Akechi and Kasumi joining Joker on the adventure. Atlas really needs to stop this monetization strategy. It's underhanded, and I hope they don't keep this going with Persona 3 Reload coming next year. As for the main game, Persona 5 Tactica had good reviews. Nothing really high, but also nothing really low. The user reviews seem to mimic this, which fits with what I've thought about the game. Persona 5 Tactica is a good game that is content being good and not ambitious enough to reach higher. Persona 5 Tactica begins with our phantom thieves gathered at LeBlanc, where they unexpectedly get thrown into a portal to another realm, with similar but different rules from the palaces they have become used to. These places are called kingdoms, and the phantom thieves are unsurprisingly unwelcome guests in this one. Upon arrival, they are assaulted by a group of soldiers called the Legionnaires and their leader Marie before being rescued by Arena, the leader of a ragtag group of rebels. By teaming up, the Phantom Thieves and Arena seek to bring down Marie and find out more about her connection to another human transported to this world, Toshiro Kasukabe. I wasn't expecting too much from the story, and so was glad to see that the story had quite a bit going for it. Arena and Toshiro are interesting characters while the Phantom Thieves themselves are the lovable group they've always been. Perhaps due to the sheer number of games they've been in though, at this point the Phantom Thieves take a back seat with character development and engagement with the main conflict serving just as capable side characters than as main. There are some great scenes where certain Phantom Thieves are able to relate to the struggles Arena and Toshiro are going through because of their personal struggles that we saw in the main Persona 5 game. All of that is nice and definitely made the story an enjoyable ride. This does mean that the story is very dependent on your opinions of Arena and Toshiro as characters, but I really enjoyed them and I think most people feel the same. For those hoping that Persona 5 Tactica would use the revolutionary imagery evoked with the French Revolution Kingdom to tell a truly revolutionary story though, will be in for disappointment. Persona 5 Tactica has some good messages and understands the general idea of fighting for the downtrodden but doesn't have anything particularly new or radical to say on the topic. It is a setting that could have used more development, but at the very least brought us good characters with a fun dynamic with our more familiar cast members. As for the strategy core of the game, you have three characters going into battle to face off against a series of enemies. Most of these battles are pretty quick and will be done in under 10 turns, which makes it very easy to pick up and play and get back into. Those looking for longer and more complex levels and challenges though will be disappointed that those sorts of battles are rare. The strategy centers around getting additional attacks by hitting vulnerable enemies, which is usually something that you're setting up with your other allies. I really enjoyed how the abilities worked together, and when I pulled off a great combination of attacks to take down several enemies at once with an all-out attack, it is so satisfying. Our main cast have their particular elemental specialties, such as On specializing in fire magic, which can burn enemies and when upgraded can knock back enemies as well. Then you have Makoto with Vortex with the nuclear abilities that consolidates enemies into a particular area. Finding the right combination of skills for your party is crucial, but everyone is at the very least somewhat useful, even if An and Yusuke outpace everyone else after a few upgrades. The status effects of each character are another thing to pay attention to, as Yusuke's ability to freeze enemies will lead to different opportunities than you would get from a standard attack. Then every character has an extra special ability that you can activate once your voltage is at full. You gather voltage naturally through combat and regular abilities. Another powerful option in your arsenal of abilities. 
On top of the abilities, you can of course do melee and gun attacks, which are helpful to intersperse in your strategy because they're easy to plan around and don't take up SP to use. There are a lot of options for abilities and strategies that really make this system fun to engage with. Mastering all these game mechanics will make the game pretty much a breeze. It's not a particularly difficult strategy game for veterans of the genre, but I did still enjoy my time with the system. I enjoyed the level design of the Persona 5 Tactica stages quite a bit. There are plenty of the standard conventions of strategy RPG level design with terrain height differences, different areas for cover, and the like. Then we have the enemy variety. There's not too much, but the ones included do have thoughtful design to make them tough opponents, such as the enemy that defends any attack in front of them. You need to use your strong maneuverability as a party to take out these enemies, and there are several others that alter your strategy in similar ways. Likewise, certain levels have gimmicks that mean you have to avoid certain ways of approaching the level, such as security cameras that spawn enemies, or large area attacks you'll need to avoid. These gimmicks felt natural to the map design, which is why I appreciated them more than some strategy RPGs with gimmicks have made me feel in the past. This variety kept the gameplay fresh throughout the playthrough. All non-boss levels also have additional rewards if you complete levels in a certain number of turns, killing a certain number of enemies, not having any allies KO'd, etc. This system gave me some incentive to return to the few levels I didn't get 3 stars on in my first attempt, and because they were quick to complete, I was fine revisiting them to get more rewards. The biggest test of your mastery of the mechanics of the game comes with the side quest maps you could do in between battles. These would require you to use specific party members in carefully designed levels with very specific win conditions. Plenty of them were levels you were expected to win in a single turn and required plenty of planning out and sometimes experimentation to figure out how to beat them. It felt like a puzzle at times, and because these were side quests instead of the main story, never felt too frustrating to complete. I appreciated the side quest design, giving a different sort of challenge while granting good rewards for completing them, and even teaching how to exploit the gameplay system more than you may have previously been doing. The biggest change between this game and the other Persona games or spin-offs is how progression works. Your party gets overall experience, not on an individual basis, so that does mean that everyone is ready for battle whenever and you don't have to worry about anyone being underleveled. When it comes to skill progression, you gain skill points from going on missions. The side quests I previously mentioned give a lot for the required party members. You can upgrade your persona skills along with various other bonuses and mechanics from recovering health and SP while in cover to getting follow-up attacks from knocking enemies off of a high place from the skill tree. You're not going to be able to pick every skill unless you really grind, but the game does give you the chance to reset and change your skill selections at any time outside of battle so you can easily adjust to the challenge ahead. The only thing you use the money you get from battle for is to buy guns for your characters or to spend on summoning new personas. Each party member, even Joker, is limited to their main one persona, but everyone, except Arena, can equip a sub-persona to enhance their stats and abilities. I love the sub-personas. I want to see that in a regular persona game at some point. You can also use personas to fuse into guns, which makes the purchasing guns part of the money pretty much pointless, so it's really just persona yen. I do feel the system would have been better if Tactica better utilized the compendium for summoning and fusing guns, but I do enjoy building up my collection and upgrading my characters. It was a non-traditional progression system that still had plenty of fun things to dive into and even ideas I'd like to see incorporated into the main series. Visually, the color world and characters are as vibrant, bright, and full of details as always. There are some really gorgeous still art pieces throughout the game that you thankfully get a gallery for to revisit visit from the main base along with the various movies of the game. Due presumably to budget though, the story apart from the cutscenes is very flat. No animation, just characters on a static background. I've been fine with other games doing this in the past, but it feels wrong for a Persona game, even a spin-off to do so. We lose quite a bit without the animated character profiles. 
Most of the cutscenes also have a weird gray box on the top and bottom of the screen while playing, which was distracting and unnecessary. The fact that it's only most of them as well makes it even more inexplicable. The actual action in those cutscenes is great, but I definitely found it harder to pay attention to that while the borders intruded on my vision. The trailer footage had nothing of the sort, so clearly they could have done away with them and I hope they update the game with an option to get rid of them at some point. Musically, the soundtrack hits as expected. I do like that the battle themes are not exactly the ones for P5 and Strikers. There is a different tone that I think fits this tactical combat better than trying to redo the same style, and Choji Meguro did this while clearly maintaining the continuity with the musical motifs of the original. The voice acting is once again really good. I do think the more static character portraits and dialogue would be a bigger problem if the performance was not as good as it is. This quality is evident in our returning actors and also our newer cast members who put on great performances. The audio balancing on the voice dialogue is soft at times on the default setting, so I do recommend playing around with volume to get it to a good point. Speaking of fiddling with things, the UX and UI for the first time in Persona history isn't top tier. The menus still look gorgeous, and at least battle is pretty clear, but there's so many menus within menus for home base actions. Maybe it's because you spend so much time in between battles wrangling menus for fusions, quests, skills, and equipment, but I felt it, and it didn't feel nice. Tactica keeps up the quality and the performance elements of the presentation, music, and voice acting, and struggles more than expected with some odd visual choices, some cost-cutting measures, and a more menu-intensive experience with lower menu quality. Atlas's recent content has been somewhat hit or miss with plenty of people, from Shin Megami Tensei 5 to Soul Hackers 2 and now Persona 5 Tactica. I have enjoyed each and every one of these while still recognizing their flaws, and for me, Persona 5 Tactica is the least obviously flawed because it is the least ambitious of the trio. It sets out to have a fun story with the Phantom Thieves, plus a couple new faces struggling to stand up and do what's right. That, coupled with a solid battle system, made me more than happy with the time I spent with the game. I'd love to see them explore some of the ideas further in a future tactics game, but I'm satisfied with this experience as it is. If you're looking for a strategy RPG to scratch that strategic itch, Persona 5 Tactica is a fine option. Thank you for giving my video a watch. Leave a like if you enjoyed, as it does very much help me and the channel out. And comment below your thoughts on Persona 5 Tactica. Subscribe for more Persona content before too long, and to see what other videos I post. And I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day, and happy gaming.